start off by showing you a wonderful task with the, with the tangram. This one really is for students maybe in grades 8 and 9. We know that in a right angle triangle, that the square on the hypotenuse, here's the square on the hypotenuse, that the area of this square, combined the area of this square, is this one plus this one. That's the Pythagorean theorem, a squared, b squared, and c squared. Now what is really interesting that one can use the tangram pieces to show another relationship. So I shall take this parallelogram and I shall insert it here. I shall take this parallelogram and insert it here and this triangle and insert it here. Now a very interesting relationship happens. If you can imagine now from this point to this point I shall draw a line. So I'm just showing you a half of this parallelogram. And look at this parallelogram a line straight through this as well, a half of that parallelogram. An interesting relationship is, not only is this the area of this square, this plus this, but you can see that this triangle is the same area as this, and if I were to draw a straight line through, that this area of this triangle is also congruent to this, and a straight line through here that this triangle, if you can imagine it, would be the same area as this. And I'll leave that up to students to prove that in a right angle triangle, that this triangle has the same area as this, same area as this, that. This is a nice task to give students in grade nine after they have done the Pythagorean theorem to show that we can use the tangram to do some very interesting things in mathematics at some of the upper grades. Now let's look at some of the traditional tasks that we give students with the tangram pieces. For example, we can do area once again with the tangram pieces. So for example, if the area of this is one square unit, use that to determine the area of each of the other pieces. So we can see quite clearly that I can take this one and I can put two of them together to make a square. So, if the area of this is one square unit, I can determine the area of that is two square units. So I can use this to determine the area of each of the other pieces of the tangram set. We can also use it for spatial sense and geometry, and this is a task that quite a few teachers like to give their students. So for example, I can say to the students, I'd like you to take two triangles and see which polygons I can make. So clearly, I can take two triangles and I can put the two triangles together to make a triangle. Well, what other polygons can I make with the two triangles? Now, what's really nice to see is if I take this triangle, I can make also a square. Well, can I make other figures? Well, I guess if I keep on playing around with it, I've got my triangle. But who? Oh, I've got my parallelogram. Now I can push this a little bit more by saying to the students, can I take two pieces and make a five-sided shape, a pentagon? And this one students find fascinating to do because if I put my two triangles like that, what's the name of that shape? Let's see. It's one, two, three, four, five. So I've made a pentagon. It's not a regular pentagon. It is a pentagon. So you can see the activity here. Can I use two pieces to make a pentagon? Can I use two pieces to make a hexagon, a heptagon, an octagon? Now let's experiment now with three pieces. If I can take three pieces. Is it possible to put three pieces together to make, say, a triangle? And if that's the case, how many ways can I do it? An interesting solution is to take the square. If I take this small triangle, it goes like this, and this small triangle goes like this. So I can take the three pieces and make a triangle. Now, you can also do a bit of money here as well. If this is worth five cents, this small triangle is worth five cents, what's the value of this bigger triangle? Nice task to give my students. So if that's five cents, we can see five, 10, two of these, 15, and 20 cents. So we can use it for monetary value. But 
Are there other ways of making the triangle from the three pieces? Well, I guess I could play around with the parallelogram and just play around with it, and you can see something quite nice. So I can also take the three pieces to make a triangle. So not only will the two triangles and the square, but I can take the two small triangles and the parallelogram. Is there another way? Well, let's play around with this. I can get the medium-sized triangle, and I take the two small triangles, and lo and behold, I can put these together, and you can see that I can make a triangle with these three small piece, with these three pieces. But not only can I make a triangle with the three pieces, I can now, by taking this piece, wow, I can make a square. And by moving it around, I can see, I can also make a parallelogram. So you can see the extension of this. Which figures can I make with three pieces? Here's another shape I can make with three pieces. I can make a trapezoid with three pieces. Now if I come back to this, as a matter of fact, a nice problem to give my students as well with this is, what's the name of this shape? And many students will say, oh, well, it's just it's a rectangle. And we agree it's a rectangle. But is it also a parallelogram? And so we can deepen the student's understanding. It's just like, what's the name of this shape? Is it just a square? Is it a parallelogram? Is it a rectangle? Is it a trapezoid? So with these pieces, we can do a lot of spatial sense and geometry with the students. We can just keep on extending the activity by asking, we can make a triangle with two pieces, three pieces. Is it possible to take four pieces and make a triangle? What about five? What about six pieces? Similarly, can I make a square with four pieces, five pieces, six pieces? What polygons can I make with four pieces, five pieces, and six pieces? So this is a very versatile piece of equipment, the tangrams.